Hi. <laughs> this Good morning. Is for the, this is the 18th edition of uh, Trico. And uh, me along with uh, uh, Sanjay, Aman and the whole Apex team is welcoming you all for this course. At the outset, I will like to thank Samir, uh, you and Dr. Saito to accept course directorship. And all my international guests, all very good friends of mine, and some new friends, including uh, Professor uh, Ziara and Professor uh, Mirzamal Zufaro, along with uh, Mayo Clinic faculties, Rajiv Malcolm, Tak Kwan, a very old buddy, and uh, Babu Nashvili, a very dear friend, and the president of Russian uh, International Society. Uh, as well as my Bangladeshi friends, Doc, Professor Patwari and Professor Sabuddin, I express my heartfelt gratitude for sparing time to enrich us and the audience with your knowledge and uh, your wisdom. All my national guest faculty friends coming from Ahmedabad as well as all over the country, my sincere thanks for being the friends in need. Whenever you know I have requested, all of you have very kindly and gracefully accepted my invitation. And of course, the participants, most of them are young generation cardiologists from across the board in this country. And uh, <laughs> the new friends from Uzbekistan, Vietnam, and of course, a, a good crowd from my Bangladesh friends. This course is mainly dedicated to the young generation of this country and of, you know, all over. It has always been our pursuit to interact. I don't say that we teach. We interact, we teach and we learn from all of you. And uh, so this time we have uh, designed the program with a lot of live demonstrations back to back today followed by a very very carefully curated uh, uh, panel discussion which I am sure everybody will enjoy. Uh, all the didactics from all international guests I have kept, we have kept in the last session, keeping the request from the young fellows and young cardiologists in mind, because that is the time they will love to hear uh, uh, the national and international authorities speaking on different uh, areas to enrich their knowledge. All in all, we will offer our best in this 18th edition. Uh, apologies for, you know, this time not keeping the tower cases because our uh, team could not get the visa from uh, uh, Kazakhstan and they are not able to make it. But next time or someday, we are going to have tricot structural for all those aspirants who want to learn structural. And we are now setting it right to create a good center of excellence over here. My apology to Samir, uh, you know, he's a very dear friend. Even if I don't apologize, it's okay. But my apology because, you know, he has been conferred with MSCAI last year. And at last moment proofreading, you know, I, I forgot to do it and uh, it has been wrongly, uh, there is a typo there. I am sorry for that, Samir. Oh, and no, no. <laughs> and uh, now, uh, we can start the program as usual on time. Uh, with me, we have two great guys as on-site commentators. Commentators, I mean, Professor uh, Rajiv Gulati from Mayo Clinic, the pro Program Director of Interventional Cardiology, Mayo Clinic, Rochester, and Professor Akasaka from Wakayama University, Japan, who has been, at least for me and many, many more in this world, 
the world authority on imaging not only oct oct i was as well as physiology i mean to the best of my knowledge i have not seen anybody who has such a great knowledge of all these three different technologies so here we can start with uh, the case history of the first case is it all right samir yes everything is looking perfect we so you well. can you uh, you know can you introduce your uh, you know colleagues over there i think with you is professor babunashvili right yes so to my right here is is uh, professor altandil babunashvili from moscow mm. a very accomplished and well known uh, interventional cardiologist and i'll give the microphone around everybody can please Uh, morning dj sir so this is dr lakshman das from chennai yeah yeah you are nice always you. a great friend thank yeah, you lakshman das good morning dj sir sanjeev hi yes dj oh. yes, thanks Hello. for coming thank you good morning dr dj this is dr anand rao from mumbai oh anand rao very very happy thank you sir to thank to you. have you over here after a long time thank yeah. you very much sir yeah good morning professor patel it's uh, dr Mr. Jamal Zufar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice Th thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Good morning, sir. Heartly congratulations for your uh, new achievement. It is a very <laughs> proud feeling for all of us. You are now Padma Bhushan. Yeah. Uh, I am your closest friend, Dr. Ajay yeah. Maj. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ajay. Thanks a lot. So, let us start with the first case. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, our first case is a 52-year-old male. who is a known case of diabetes mellitus presented with effort angina on 2d echo his lv function was found to be normal lvef 60% coronary angiogram suggested of left main with dvd calcified lesion his syntax score is 25 our today's plan is to do pci to lmca bifurcation lesion madina 110 over to kathlet NGO loops, please. Yeah, just hold on. Uh, Samir, is the transmission perfect over there? Extremely good. Yeah, it's excellent. Very, very high definition. Yeah. He, yeah, you can see in the first. Uh, you know, I'm just show from the first view. The, is this the first view? yeah yeah you can see the distal left main many of the views don't show that second view the caudal view does not show that but a very critical calcified proximal led almost ostial to proximal led almost 95% stenosis next 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 okay rca is almost like a non dominant type and here can you focus the camera here here this is 6 by 7 tarumo slender sheath and this is our regular practice in every single intervention done in our lab that we use combo technique again it has been published by us uh, 125 cm catheter that is uh, uh, multi purpose cordis uh, along with seven french guide ebu 3.5 and of course baby j wire a beautiful tiny instrument from tarumo so so i am starting it with me is uh, sanjay who is the backbone actually for me he is with me since 1997 my colleague my partner and he has always been with me and supported me in all the times good times as well as bad times and sanjay speaks very less but you know he is extremely wise and a complete interventionalist so i mean 
the pressure is good go to lao ap cranial view uh, uh, now let me let me just uh, check it in a caudal view just to make sure that my guide catheter is in alignment a little scout there okay yeah i can see some good calcium in the initial area and we'll check it out it's a fibrocalcific lesion there is mm -hmm. a you know you can say ramus or a high obtuse marginal which has a disease Be. the circ origin is not bad come to epicranial okay go to lao cranial So, how many of you think that there is no left main? You can see some ventricularization here, but there is a good amount of distal left main plucking. Go to LAO caudal two. Just let's take it. All right. So, I am going to wire LAD. Second wire, I will be putting later on. I need to first do dilatation and OCT run. Again, you know, it has been said that for left main, OCT is not a good modality of imaging. We beg to differ. And particularly with a new available OPSTAR catheter, you can assess up to 5.5 to 6 millimeter artery so otherwise initially we were using for the ostium the ivus and uh, uh, oct both yes dr Tejas, this is dr anand rao before yeah. uh, before you go i would like you know we would have an opinion what what is the strategy and what what is happening because yeah it's a good it's question a, it's a, because it's a, there is an ostial left man which uh, looks like the reflex is not very great and uh, you have a there uh, is a le ostial left main uh, Anand Rao, yes. as well as I would say that distal left main, you know, more towards the plaque, more leaning towards the circumflex. So, my strategy is to put a wire in LED, this is run through extra floppy, dilate it with a non compliant balloon because I can see significant calcium there. So, are you going to do a so, calcium so, modification? Yeah, yeah, case? that's what I want to decide after dilating and taking a OCT run. Yeah, second wire, I am going to just continue this run, LAO caudal. Second wire, I am going to keep is not in the circumplex, but in that high OM or, you know, uh, uh, Ramus, whatever you say. Because otherwise, you'll end up putting three wires and we frankly don't like too much crowding inside inside the coronary yeah it is 65% 60% go to ap cranial yeah it's a good question First because yes, 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 yeah, certainly, that, uh, certainly. Because of the contrast, uh, you plug the contrast otherwise, is that your, your thought? Yeah, and yeah. you know, you get a great image with some pre-dilatation. And here, I, I am not supposed to decide whether it is significant or not. And uh, uh, that's why even if I crack the lesion, there is no problem. See, Papa. I I will like to know from the strategy from the panel. I mean, Samir, what do you think? I think initially, you know, I, I totally agree. We need to get a good quality imaging study there to see what the lay of the land is. 2.5 NC emerge, 2.5 by 50. The disease extends from the ostium of the left main yes. well into the LAD. 
uh, the circumflex is definitely co-dominant, yeah. if, if not dominant, and so that is going to be a little bit of an issue down the road. Yeah, um, and my strategy is a single stand strategy, provisional T, for sure, in this case, if sure. at all. Yeah, makes and, sense. Yep. And Tejas, just to clarify, when you say single stand, you mean from the mid left main into the LAD, a long stand, or would you yeah. try and uh, that I will decide. Feel. That I am going to decide. You know, once I OCT. have a OCT image available with me. So Tejas, for the ostium of the left main and the OCT uh, vi visualization in a in a crisp way, uh, what what's your thought and you know? how confident you are you will get a good look at the at the ostium of the left that's a good question i mean with opstar you know we have just started using i think we have a great experience otherwise we have we are a, you know sort of a regular day to day left main intervention center so many times i have used both these modalities for bifurcation uh, OCT and for the ostium I was in the same patient because I want to offer my best to the same pa uh, the patient. And Dr. Akasaka, good morning. Uh, if, if I could ask you, what is the role of a guide extender in OCT so. imaging of ostium of the left main? Yeah. It's Good morning, everyone. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. At the moment, Proximal if you try to uh, yes use an OCT direct to the uh, uh, yes. Uh, Left main, it might be very difficult to see, but uh, through the extension catheter, we can see the uh, left main clearly. It depends on the type of extension catheter. I, I do not have an obstacle uh, extension, but uh, a telescope uh, is very useful to see uh, left main at the same time at, from the uh, uh, distal LED to the, the left main orifice. So telescope is better than guideliner Dr. or guidezilla? Ah, yes, Dr. yes. Good to know. Was there a 2.0 uh, balloon or? 2.5. 2.5. You know, I tell you why. Yeah, people get frustrated with OCT imaging at times because they have to take multiple injections. This was a calcified lesion, so we thought that if we dilate, there will be less of the resistance with the, uh, you know, injection, and you can get a great image. This, all strategies have been developed by Sanjay in this lab, and nowhere in the book it has been written, I tell you. When to inject quickly, when to inject slow. We will discuss throughout, you know, uh, through the t uh, different times in this course about it and that can be a great tip for all those who are doing OCT. Yes, if you can demonstrate the injection technique step by step, yes. that will be very good. Thank you. I think with this new catheter, the amount of dye you have to take is you can take 50-50 with a saline with a dye and then you can do a hand injection. You don't need any um, machine okay. injection Proximal and then you get a Jau great Jau pictures Jau. Uh -huh. with the hand okay. injection itself. Okay. Yeah. And you don't need to <coughs> apply too high force also. It is a work well with Jau. the saline alone in okay. now, very well. Now Sanjay is yeah. uh, uh, taking a shoot, uh, you know. Sanjay, you tell what you are going to do. Okay. Quick. Sanjay, how much Just is the mix, uh, contrast and this one? 10 cc. <coughs> no. We have to take it again. Yeah. This has proximal part has, I mean distal part has come properly. Because uh, middle marker movement was ha late. Late. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes it happens in significant lesions. For proximal we have to take Dr. another Dr. Akasaka shoot. will uh, talk about the, the <coughs> distal lesion. Yes. I personally feel that proximal lesion had good amount of calcium and fibrosis. Yeah. The distal is, yeah. From the distal, still we have a calcium here. Nodular calcium. It is not calcific nodule, right? Right, right. Yeah. And here, uh, we also have a calcium here. Yeah. Okay. And uh, also the uh, <coughs> rhodosome calcium, right, yeah. And then uh, here might be the, the, the very wonderful Sight, right? right? Only a fibrous plug and ca calcium here. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. 
Right, right. And still. Doc yeah, here is Dr. Saito. Great, <laughs> great Dr. Saito. I would say the Dr. Saito. <laughs> We have kept some designer's cases for you. Huh? We, you, you, we he, want you to be exhausted. Yeah. Tight region in the proximal side. Well, we uh, need another injection for proximal. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. We cannot for see. Yes, yes. Very yes. Very we are well, going to right. take another 10 cc, uh, uh, 7 to 8 cc injection or 10 cc. Mm. Uh, okay. I have the just question, Tejas, and for discussion uh, in panel. What visualization okay. modality is better for diffuse disease, particularly in calf stenosis? Because, okay, sure. uh, with OCT, we can um, accurately assess the calcium mark and so on. But what about the uh, diameter and the stent size? Because uh, on the OCT, it is seen. we often don't see the medium. And media, media, and OCT images are quite difficult. Mm -hmm. What about the IOS? IOS, we can see the media because. Uh, the penetration depth is the more in uh, I was image than yeah, OCT. Nah, it's a good but question. What's the preferable in calcium and diffusal disease, disease uh, arteries, I was or OCT? What is your opinion? Calcified lesion, always OCT if I can. Because uh, everything can be seen well. It's not, it has not come. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, scout. I think uh, we need to dilate more. Scout? Uh, just stop watching it. Mm, this shall look through. Te Tejas? Yes. What about the uh, diameter choosing? No, no, no. Stand uh, diameter uh, choosing. We can uh, we can see goes, the yeah. media, media. Uh, mm, me mm. Media, media measurement no, in no, OCT. No, no. Where is the marker was distal to? Yeah. yeah. Now, now, Yes yes, 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 yes. It was my mistake. I mm. pushed it a little bit more, and that's the reason why we were seeing the distal area. I'm okay. sorry for that. Yeah. Okay. This was my mistake. Yeah. So generally, we give 10 cc. 10 cc. And just I am starting with the command. Whenever pullback command is there, I start to inject. Quick. No, it's not coming out. Not coming out. It's not moving. It's not moving. It moved late actually. It means we need to dilate still more. Yeah, it's a very heavily calcified lesion which we are, which I anticipated actually. Or we give late injection. Or, or late injection. Okay. Go to AP cranial. Let me first fix the marker. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. Scout. Yes. No. Fine. Yeah. Go to AP caudal now. He mm -hmm. will inject late because there is a grip of the catheter in the calcium. So I will see at the middle marker and once it starts moving, then only I will inject. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now you see, huh? It has come, but uh, still, still, not not good. Good image, not good image. Very tight lesion here, right? It's a tight lesion. We have not broken it well, I suppose. Mm -hmm. We need to take again. Oh, no. Yeah. So, let us do one thing. Let us aggressively dilate that area mm -hmm. and come back. Come on. Yeah. Get me the balloon. Guiding, guiding. Yeah. Here, here might be the, uh, we are not uh, clearly seen, but uh, this might be the tightest region and we can see a very thick very calcium. Very tight. Very thick, thick calcium. calcium. And area is very small. That is the reason why we cannot get an clear image right here no, balloon, also the balloon law tight. get me a 3 by 15 uh, nc emerge is it wise to use this angioscope uh, frankly we don't use it but yeah you can use it but uh, uh, this lesion is a breakable lesion ajay let us see Hmm. Uh, 
just coming back to Dr. Samir Pancholi's uh, comment on how the guideliner or that uh, uh, telescope can help in uh, OCT imaging in the case of uh, left main. Uh, can you elaborate? Yes, uh, we, we can see the, uh, the, the left main through the, the uh, extension catheter, right? Therefore, uh, so we need uh, some uh, backflow, but uh, yeah. Pressure, pressure. Other uh, extension catheter we cannot see very well through the, the extension catheter outside the extension the catheter, scope. but the uh, telescope we can see okay. very well. Okay. 15. I think we have broken it. Go to AP yes. cranial. Yeah. Let us check. Uh, I think we have broken it. You can. Sa Sa Samir, I told, ne, you can, you know, we have a habit of uh, judging, uh, you know, the character of the lesion from uh, the angiographic view. And that has helped us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But this is a good example of how OCT catheter can be braced by the calcium. Ah. This is, uh, you know, Reflect. Even yeah, to answer your question, the also. telescope is basically transparent to the oh. OCT. Oh, yeah. So just we have to remove the we have to remove the guide catheter. It is. Catheter. It is. See, there is a lot of fibrosis there. My catheter balloon is jumping there. So I would like to break that. Hmm. Okay. 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 Great. Now come to AP caudal. There is a significant disease in the ostium of the left main too. Chal, chal, quick. <laughs> How is this uh, size matrix going to play in a uh, difference between the LAD and uh, left main? Left yeah, it's a good LAD. question. There we have, you know, always a strategy that we, we, we deploy the stand distally because there is a long segment and we try to put the left main stand, you know, inside that stand to avoid the, the, the dissection. We go at a reasonably uh, moderate pressure there and in the proximal left main area, we dilate very extensively. Okay. Okay? Fine. Is that all right, hmm. Sanjay? Quick. Yes, yes, all right. Now, yeah, chalo. Chalo. I expect a great image, huh? Huh? Great. He has injected okay. very late, even then. Yeah, this is a very clean image, very clean image. This is a uh, nodular calcium. Yes. Yeah, huge here, calcium. Here, here, here is a um, bifurcation, right? Bifurcation, yes. yes. Right. And a huge amount of calcium. Right. This is a left main. Left right? main, yeah. We still have a very thick calcium. Calcium. From 6 o'clock to the 10 o'clock, right? Yes, yes. More, more than one millimeter, right? Yeah. So this is a near orifice area, right? Yeah, and yeah. Then still left main. Coming back to the uh, bifurcation here, this might be a CX. Yes. And after uh, ballooning, we can see disruption here, mm -hmm. dissection, and also we have a very thick calcium just opposite side of the, the CX, hmm. right? Then back to the uh, distal portion, we still have a very thick uh, calcium here, very complex region, right? And after ballooning, we have a small dissection, yes, and yeah, very uh, not not so big calcium here, a little bit uh, proximal LAD region and here, right. So after the, yeah. So three. what should be the strategy? What should be the strategy? Bye. I think uh, there's not much of superficial calcium. There's more of uh, uh, media and uh, adventitial calcium. So I think 
Ostiums are always better treated with a cutting balloon, maybe a three-way cutting balloon at, I, the, at the LED ostium so that you can crack the calcium much better. Uh, professor, I want to take lithotripsy, IVL. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Let us do that, huh, Sanjay? Okay. Three? 3.5. 3.5 by 12, IVL. Uh, Dr. Tejas, I have one question okay. for you. Because, yes. Because, you know, we didn't see at any point in time a... Uh, 360 degree calcium. But that's all. Uh, I tell you, but, but there is. They are more of nodular calcium. So is 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 your preference a cutting balloon or IVL at this situation? I, I, IVL. I tell you why. Because if you have a calcific nodule, a, a solid calcific nodule, and the rest of the tissue are normal or near normal, IVL does not work. But uh, but if you have some calcium here and there, see in at least you know more than 50 60 percent area and the rest of the tissue is fibrotic IVL. also or fibro led and uh, ostium of the left me 3.5 so uh, i can tell you that uh, ivl here hopefully should be of great help to us in stent expansion part and it has been clearly shown that IVL has shown to get, give a much better, uh, you know, MLAs, uh, MSA as compared to other other modalities, in particularly this type of situation. Yes. Hello, hello. Professor. Yes. One question. Uh, do we, hello. Professor. Yes. Uh, do we need always predilatation before IVL? Of course, anything? yeah, always, always, always. Because the balloon is not a very trackable balloon. It's not a great trackable balloon. So we always, yeah. This is a new catheter, I think, with 160 pulse, right? You don't need that much, but we will still see. On OCT criteria, which kind of uh, calcium uh, uh, you decide your strategy, like uh, nodular calcium you go with a... Uh, See, first of all, you know, young generation sitting there has to understand, you all know, but yeah, still, that the difference between nodular calcium and calcific nodule. Nodular calcium is something, you know, which has something to, to cushion it, you know, before yes, the intima. Some tissue, may it be normal or may it be fibrous tissue or whatever. Uh, and uh, calcific nodule is calcium really protruding uh, inside the lumen. So nodular calcium, you know, it works no, out S well. 80 pulse or no? Uh, 80. 80 Chau, pulse. Chau, 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 quick. Yes, uh, as uh, Professor Patel said, uh, recently uh, the, the terminology is a little bit confusing. Uh -huh. uh, Dr. Virumani, pathologist, uh, she... I, yeah, identify the, the nodular calcium is a simple uh, uh, yeah, protrusion of the calcium mass. Yeah. Professor, can you can you get me the left main osteal MLA? ML. Yeah, okay. I want to know whether I am going to work there or not. It he, looks good, although yeah. it is oval. It looks uh, at least around 8.5 or 9. Dr. Akasaka. Yes, uh, yes. For, uh, Nodular calcium no, is, uh, no. orbital attractive is a better choice uh, than uh, IVL? Uh, uh, still, we do not have uh, enough data, but uh, the, some uh, yes, uh, usefulness uh, of the IVL is reported, uh, only a case report. And also, the OCT sometimes may miss to identify the clock. Uh, the, 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 the calcium, if it is very thick, but uh, by a micro CT, it demonstrates the, the, the crack of the, the calcium, micro fracture of the calcium nodule. So, at the moment, there are still some discussion, but uh, more than a 180 degree calcium IVL should be very useful, right? It's the lumen area is very good, huh? Yeah. The, the left main orifice is. Uh, yes. Area is more than. Mo more square. than eight or uh, more, more than, than nine ten. actually around yeah, ten yeah, yeah, yeah around ten. Yeah. Around 
10.57. So, Rajiv, we are not going to touch the Austria. Release. It's very clear. Fine. It's okay. And it's a stable plaque. Hmm. It's, uh, it's a st very stable, stable plaque. Yes. yes. See, that is something uh, which is quite attractive with OCT because uh, the stability of the plaque, uh, thick cap, fibroethroma, thin cap, you can judge the amount of calcium, calcium score, etc. can be judged more precisely, particularly in this area which is quite vulnerable otherwise. My other concern is uh, the length of the left nerve because if you want to do a pot, uh, does it have enough length to okay, take this the is pot? A syringe I think so. We can do it in segments. That's not a big deal. But uh, yeah, uh, we have to do some work on it. Yeah, it's not like uh, just go in and out. Yeah. This catheter may give me hard time, I know. Good. Oh, good. Very dilated. good. Now go to epicranial. We start dilating from okay. distal onwards. Okay. Okay. We will go at a very modest, this thing. Scout. Here? Little. Okay. Fine. Okay. Only 10 pulse here quickly. Uh -huh. Go to epicordal. Now keep it in this view. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Four. Go. Go. So, 79, 78. Sidhu Six. Six and deflate. We don't need more. Yep. Still a little bit of a waste in the middle, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's it. We can, I'm just pulling it little back. Now right. go. Quick. As you see, nice ECG changes, the shock topics here. Yes, right yes, 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 yes. Mm. Just show that. It looks like a pacemaker rhythm. Six. <laughs> <laughs> deflate. That, that in the literature, they have shown some torsitis depointis cases leading to VF. Yes. Yeah. Come back. Go here. Now we can go to maybe AP caudal. I think one other thing from the literature, Tejas, is some people ask if you should do the uh, lithotripsy after the stent or before, but I think it's very clear Six. that you should do it before. Before. Yeah, uh, yeah. After the stent is almost like off-label, <laughs> yep. but we have to do sometimes. Now, scout. Yeah, these are the main areas coming now. So as and when I get a chance, I am pulling my wire, uh, guide catheter back. All these things are so vital. Deflate. Sanjay is very quickly going in and out. Acha Sanjay, mm -hmm. tell them the method. The young generation, many of them might not be knowing how you do. Yes, we inflate at poor atmosphere and then we deliver pulses. Yeah, yeah. After 10 pulses are delivered, we go up to it's 6 atmosphere. It's the tightest atmosphere. place here. Yeah, 10 pulses delivered now. And six, he will go at a six, six, six atmosphere, atmosphere and, and deflate. Like yes. Yes. But, you know, looks like still did not break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Line. I'm little one millimeter go up here. Yeah. But Samir, looking at this appearance, I tell you, the stent will expand very well. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Six. Deflate. We can go inside a little bit, scout. Just check it out. We don't have to go very proximally. Yeah? Hmm. yeah. So I think. Yeah, go here. Yes. Yeah, because at the carina, there is a calcium, you know, big nodular calcium. Yeah. What, what was the EEL diameter of the proximal LED? Le uh, the diameter wise? Diameter wise, proximal LED here, Professor, yeah. Deflect. Happy the you know. Ten last ten. Said moment. Go. Okay. Go here. Fine. Go here. Yeah. Yeah, that's the LED. Now. Yeah, it has gone yeah. now, Samir. Hmm. Yeah. Deflect. In the left main, it looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. 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 Deflect. Six. So. Yeah, might be okay. the. 
the proximal left main, uh, so we can see the media to media here, right? Pressure, to pressure, yeah, pressure. pressure is on. Might be here. I can't look right. Hmm. So, 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 so uh, three, three five is a good size. Yeah, three five. Bijo three five is yeah. a good size. Hmm. Oh, Emma. Yes. Get me another uh, uh, run through. I would have taken another, uh, you know, OCT run, but I think I will quickly wire the OM now or high Ramos branch and uh, we, uh, we will show it post. Even in the post tenting run also, we can show you a lot of cracks happening mm. there. Mm. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, we were yeah. just discussing how difficult it is to see the media in the OCT here. At Be, the I tell lead. you why. Because it's a very complex lesion. Right. If it is a simply fibrotic or partly fibrocalcific lesion, most of them you can see it well. But the artery is, you know, you hardly find normal tissue in most of the areas. And that's the reason why right. uh, LAO caudal. So... Uh, from the panel, who all will use three wires and who will use two wires, what I have decided? I probably use two wires. I, I have a very hard time managing three wires. Yes, yes, three yes. wires means there is a chance for entanglement and you are stuck <laughs> many times. Three wires is for young people, Tejas. For yeah. old people can't uh, remember where the yeah. wires are. I think everybody agrees hey, on the panel that two wires. Two wires. Yep. <laughs> Rajiv, you are young, so you don't say that. Just you say, are I, I thank you for your <laughs> generosity, but you and I both know that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but one advantage, again, of the lithotripsy, with road ablation, you know, very tight left main, you, you, you don't have wire access in the side. And it's a, I tell you. Sometimes it's been so helpful. Yeah, to have with it. the Japanese uh, data, I think yeah. it is from Professor mm -hmm. Akasaka. Uh, uh, MSA is much better with lithotripsy vis-a-vis -vis rotablator. Uh, correct me if I am wrong. Yeah, I told so I mean guiding Okay, fine. Yeah. So now go to AP Are you going to use a cutting balloon to open up the tastium or? Frankly speaking, frankly speaking. If I get away with a great result, uh, you know, uh, I will do kissing and leave it just like that. I'll put my wire in the circumflex once I stand that area. And then I'll do kissing and get, get out because with one vessel disease, the prognosis is excellent. And, uh, you know, doing everything, you know, we have learned hard way from our mistakes. You know, at times you spoil the great result. So... It's okay. Let us see what happens. Go to AP cranial. So while we are waiting, I have a question for Rajiv and for Malcolm, if he is able to. Uh, is uh, what's your thought on complete versus incomplete revascularization in a PCI oh, patient? Oh. Leaving things behind mm -hmm. versus chasing everything. LED no strength, Lily. Malcolm, where to put distal? I, th I think it's a great question, but I yeah. think you know, uh, when we look at more and more of the data, hmm. I think it's very clear that if we're going to be doing PCI and multivessel disease, it should be complete revascularization. What's we're not going to change the small huh. vessels. 3.5? But uh, if you're three, not going to do three, surgery three. and you've had patients with multivessel seven. disease, hmm. I think you know, there's enough data to suggest that uh, so, you really need for complete revascularization. So, Samir, my question. Yep, Digital sure. landing will be in that a bigger LAD region. That's a stable region with most of the normal tissue there, I can see. So, what is going to be the stand size in that area? Because then I am going to put another stand left main to LED and, uh, you know, uh, uh, overlap it with one or two millimeter. I think they uh, all, let me tell, let me give the answer in yes. a lighter note. Yep. The Americans will say 3.5, but we are going to take 3. Yes, 3 or 3 <laughs> to 5 is the, mo the most I would go. <laughs> I think by the Illumin protocol, you would downsize by a quarter for EEL diameter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Either you downsize from EEL quarter or you can go up with a intimal, you know, inner diameter with quarter. So give me <coughs> maybe 3 by 18. Hmm, hmm. 3 by 18 giants alpine. See, 
I have another instrument in you know hands on because proximally I am going to use a 4 millimeter balloon and I will I can put it inside in that area and inflate it at a modest 6 or 8 atmosphere just to make sure that everything is fine leaving the distal area. Yeah. Give, give, give. Let me ask Dr. Akasak, in terms of a landing zone for the proximal stent, the mid left main looks uh, relatively good for a landing zone. Easily, yes, no, no, I'm not agree. Chill, the OCT pocket. Here is the, the, the mid portion and the uh, uh, fibrous and also the other side is the calcium, very stable site, so it might be better to put a stent in this portion, right? One other question, Dr. Akasaka. Yeah. Uh, what is, how much is the weightage of the symmetry of stent expansion versus just the area? Uh, uh, as you may know, if we have a very eccentric calcium, it might be very difficult to obtain the uh, symmetric result, right? So uh, area should be much Little important bit. than yes. the symmetricity. But uh, okay. if possible, uh, uh, the much more symmetricity okay. should be a, a better result. Okay. So symmetry is better if you can get it, 12, but 14, area is a must. 12, yes. 14. Sam, that was a great question because we've seen experience, especially with some of the younger colleagues who are chasing symmetry and then there's a risk of perforation because the balloon expands okay. to the normal side. Is, has that been your experience witnessing other cases? 18. Absolutely. And especially, go to AP quadrant. Very short balloons are better because there's no dumbbell type of, you know, over expansion causing perforation. Scout. Yeah, one quarter uh, calcium abidus? protruding uh, yeah. and the opposite abidus. side uh, fibrotic, uh, there is a great chance of perforation. Uh, we have seen now and then. Uh, that is a very important thing uh, to take from the OCD. OCD gives that information. Yes. So uh, you have to be careful about the perforation always. Yes. If it is only okay. one quarter calcium protruding too much and the opposite side, there is only soft tissue. So it was a, it was a great, so I just want to confirm with Dr. Akasak, as you look at area and symmetry is less important, not critical for you, area is acceptable. No, no, no. I think uh, the, the, when we think about the prognosis, at least the gnosis, the area is uh, highly uh, yes, related to the, the prognosis. Therefore, the, the yes, uh, minimum stand area is much more important than the symmetricity. But if possible, we try to get an better symmetricity. However, as already discussed, if we have a very eccentric calcium and the other side is uh, nearly normal, if you dilate using a bigger balloon, higher pressure, we may have the risk of perforation. So the younger generation have to pay attention to the uh, eccentric calcium. Right. Thank you. So so the I, I have a question for uh, Professor Akasaka. So we're talking about step up, uh, stent optimization and MSA. What MSA should we be striving for in the left main? Left main, uh, at least uh, uh, the six square millimeter. But in this case, we already have a ten square millimeter. Therefore, we would have like to have yes. more than ten right, in this case. But uh, it depends on the case, the size of the uh, left main is uh, the depend on the case, right? So yeah. therefore, uh, the very small left main, we need at least six square millimeter to avoid the ischemia, right? And as far as the relative MSA in left main, would you settle for 80% in left main ever okay. compared Scalcine. to the, the, the reference area? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, well, yes. Yeah. Theoretically, 90% uh, is the best, but uh, uh, sometimes we have to accept the 80%. It depends on the, the calcium distribution and the, the eccentricity of the calcium or some other factors. Yes. So, so even in left main, it is okay to take 80% if you cannot do any better. That's, uh, yeah. yeah, we always think about uh, the absolute uh, area yes. and Arpa also the, the person stenosis, right? If the area is more than six and the eccentric, uh, no, no, the person stenosis is more than 80, uh, we will accept it's dependent on the case, but uh, it's okay, yes. Thank you. 12. 12. Yeah. In this case, uh, these are very short left main and LED wash tail region. And there is a late, uh, already I think uh, Dr. Anand has raised that. 
uh, it's a suppose how to do a pot because we have got a shortest balloon available is 6 mm and lap main and LED mismatch is sometimes too much. Suppose you want to do 5 mm pot for lap main LED or stem is around 3.5. So it's a, uh, what, what to do in such cases? You can always, you know, at an area where 5 mm is required, you can go very high. At an area where it is not required, up to 6 mm, the principle of balloonomics, the balloon will conform to the lumen size. So you may go to 6 or 8 to, to get the things, you know, right. This looks fine. Yes. No, no pinching. No pinching. You could have uh, taken a, a plaque modifying uh, angio scalp or something like that. Even with the IVL, probably it would have added uh, some more uh, modification to the plaque. But Is in, a possibility? Lakshman Das, in this yeah. case, you know, you are doing too much of instrumentation. And you know, in, in 92, you know, I worked with Roger Colletti and all the time, you know, that has gone deep seated in my brain. He used to all the time tell, it was only balloon era. And he used to say that anything in circulation is thrombogenic. Anything in circulation is thrombogenic. So I, I like to be as minimalistic mm -hmm. as possible depending on the case. That's right. Hmm? So now, before doing kissing, I think we do one OCT run. Okay. Yeah, that will be interesting. Yep. I'm taking 20. So here... Because the still LED still look uh, not well done. Let's see. I think it is very well done. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tejas, te you see, there's you there is some plaque shift in Sir costume. We will see. Sir. See that I agree. It looks like plaque shift, but that is probably the concertina created by that wire. We will show that. No worries. And sometimes some sort of you know, subintimal hematoma, contained hematoma in the osteal region over there can look like plaque shift. And carinal shift as well, Tejas. It looks yes. maybe like that. Yes. yes. But I, I want to ask you a question. It you had no hesitation in doing kissing. It was routine for you. There's no debate in your mind to do kissing. You wouldn't just leave this? Pardon? Would you ever just leave this and not do kissing? Or you I, always I do kissing? I will see, because this is pretty big osteum, so I m might have to do kissing. If the circ is sometimes less than 2.5, just one strut here and there in the periphery, Rajiv, yeah. you will certainly leave it. That is where it matters. I really don't care nowadays for proximal or distal crossing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, link connecting and link free carina, we, it's not in our hand. Yeah. Uh, uh, we need to have Professor Akas Akas' opinion, he may differ. <laughs> <laughs> because it is his original work, I know. And we have learned everything from him. Yeah, in acute phase, uh, we will take. We, uh, we leave one? it alone, yes, yes. Okay. but uh, the result is okay. But uh, two, three years we'll later, see. sometimes we can identify membrane stenosis uh, if there are uh, metal carina. Uh, yes. yes. So chalo, it, it chalo. depends on the case. I, if there are. Uh, yeah, link free type, it might be very easy to have. Uh, Dr. Akasaka, if yes. uh, the OCT is showing there are many struts crowding across the circumflex ostium, uh, would it make sense to go ahead and uh, do a kissing inflation or you routinely do it with, with, with imaging, without imaging? What is no, it, it depends on uh, the, the, the stand, uh, this, uh, strut distribution. If they are uh, yes, link free, it might be very easy to have a now good let us, result. Let us discuss this. Okay. Yeah, here is a proximal LED, right? Very fibrous, and here might be the calcium and the big calcium here on the left main. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. that area is great. Almost good a position, right? Now, coming to the area where where it looks little lesser expanded. Can we move and see on which side you see the calcium, whether it is on the septal side or on the diagonal side? Okay. If it is on the septal side, I will I will not do anything because there are chances of cardiac tamponade in this case. If yeah. it is on the diagonal side, still we can go at a high pressure. This is, is this is you know my approach in this case. At the marker 30, looks like the MSA, right? Yeah, lumen area is 8.49 in the. 
Yeah, three o'clock. We can identify the, the CX, right? Yeah. Mm. right. This so is the, this section. Yeah. The that really here fixed. might might be it's the intimal though. Might it's be intimal the, the though. We we'll fix because right. the mouth of the dissection uh. is in the uh, yes. If we can show us the 3D bifurcation, uh, that will show us uh, the struts across the circumflex ostium. Yes, yes. And yeah, 3D bifurcation. So I'm just wondering, right, now opposite side from the, the LCX, we have a very thick calcium. Okay. And the, the upper side is an epicardial okay. site. Okay. And here is in the myocardial site. Hmm. Yeah. And epicardial site is uh, uh, nearly normal, so too much. So uh, 55 percent, yeah. Yeah. 50 percent, right? Yes. So the risk is there. Risk is there. See, this is Samir. This is so important. Right. You go on chasing that area, which has a reasonably good lumen. You create tamponade. Yes, because absolutely. the calcific is nodule is towards the myocardial side. If it is towards the diagonal side, epicardial, I don't mind going at 20 atmosphere there. Because even if some perf happens, it goes inside, you know, so th no issues. True. The distal edge is okay, Dr. Patel? No, no, no. Nice. We are going to dissection. Uh, yeah, I am going to come to that point. Should we cover distal, it? Yes, yes. Because, because the mouth of the dissection is against the flow. If it was not against the flow, intimal dissection, I would have left just like that, looking at the length. But here you can see the mouth of the dissection is facing the blood flow. So I have to fix it. Yeah. And it's also more than 60 degrees, right, on the arc? Yes. So yeah, it, it has to. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it, it will fix it. Yeah. But now we will see the 3D. Okay. It will be very important, very important. Samir, if we talk about the uh, stent optimization criteria, if I clearly remember, you renovate PCA, 80% oh, uh, is anything. only 50% uh, of this patients. This red is uh, uh, artifact, what, right? Yeah, yes. And so what you we have can only do in this case, there? Uh, we can do physiology or Leave it. Uh, what something do you maybe think? more dilation. What yeah. we can do? And on the yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, yeah. other uh -huh. hand, uh, in optimal uh, no, 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 uh, optimal criteria 80% or more and 50% or less, the, the clinical outcome is the similar. See, yeah. another important thing here is there is one, only one strut which is hanging there. The red one is an artifact. And uh, what is the opinion? Should I do kissing or not? I would leave so, it be because yes, there sir. is disease yes. in the circumflex. There, yeah. Yes. There are some recommendations saying that you can do a run from circumflex into the left main, you know, yes, to understand whether... I tell you, doing that may disturb that strut, actually. Right. Doing that may disturb the strut. So, I will fix the distal LAD, uh, the, the distal uh, lesion, and then we are done. Scrub the Yeah. Yeah. So, Dr. Bhubanashvili had a very good point is that ma many times we cannot achieve the 80% of the MSA. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, how big is the difference, Dr. Akasaka, in the MACE outcomes at one year or so in those who we can achieve or not achieve? Is it five times more MACE or is it a little bit more MACE? Uh, I'm not sure, uh, the, the, but the, the based on the, the yes evidence might be uh, uh, yes five times, Could nearly five so times. Uh, two point five. Yeah, I think. Hmm. Really? Yep. Hmm. And two point seven. Because it looks like we don't have okay. any, any other ah. technology, right? Two point seventy five fifty. World is divided over to dilate the circum. Suppose the dominant circumflex. Yeah. Whether we should do a routine kissing balloon. Because it's the see, dominant cell. See, that is a problem. You know, like, you know, if you are at a level of Dr. Professor Akasaka to read IVAS, you can read, you know, how much is it. Or not. But here it is very clearly shown that there is hardly anything. And uh, I tell you, we have done this circumflex to left main uh, runs also in this type of cases where we think of some, some plaque shift or something. But many times we have come out with the conclusion of some sort of, a, 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 you know, a contained hematoma in that region.
I I think left main ostium is also missing. Uh, our stent is not uh, protruding into the aorta. No, no, no. Oh, the left main ostium we have not touched, Ajay, because the MLA was 9.57. You know, so no need to touch. And it was an extremely stable left main plaque, fibro fibrocalcific. No need. Absolutely no need. And regarding the di dissection, of course we can leave the proximal dissection, but the distal dissection we should not leave it. No, that also, if it, it is only intimal and if it is not a big arc and if it is not against the flow and with the flow you can leave it, there is no problem. Every single medial dissection has to be fixed. Even it is a proximal or distal? Yeah. Okay. And uh, now nowadays with the DEB era, we are so much confused that because you create a dissection, do a DEB and leave it. So it's a very, very, I think it's a debating what, what, what is the dissection. <laughs> Whether we should fix it or we are going back to 30 years. There are experts in the audience who have a lot of experience with DEB. You ask, I have no experience with DEB. <laughs> so I am not the best guy to answer. <laughs> Yes, the, yes. The 3D modification. Yeah. It's, but it's but like how art. you can sleep at night? Artistic. <laughs> you don't. You have to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, my my submission on your comment, you know, Jayesh, is if if you have a calcified lesion, you may sleep without <laughs> taking tranquilizer because little calcium bit. cannot uh, calcium will not recoil by and large Sine. you have to have uh, elastic tissue to recoil if it's a fibrocalcific lesion most of the time nothing happens no. push, 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 push. Push, push. epicranial epicranial I am, I am finding difficult with that mm. wire coming in my way uh -huh. I am was cinema Aju, little more. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. go. I'm going up. Wait, 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 wait. There is probably we have to pull it back. No. Okay, go. Perfect. Ten. Ten. Okay. okay. Twelve. What size is the stand? Two point seventy five. Little bit correct. Uh, here twelve <laughs> and then now maybe twenty. No mm. problem. Twelve? Fifteen? Yeah. Fifteen? Deflect. I think it's good. Hmm? Can you see the OCT? Right. I just try to uh, uh, yes make an a 3D of the distal yeah. dissection. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It start from the uh, just end of the, the stand here. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah. That's and a beautiful image. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then uh, goes to the uh, this portion. Right. Yes. So it may uh, yes open to the, the proximal side. May have the risk of the some flow disturbance, yeah. right? And length is nearly uh, uh, five. So, so it qualifies yes. for stenting, yeah. yes. Uh, Samir, it has become so objective nowadays huh, with all these things. I just you don't have to think much. I feel bad for myself 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I think we, we have done, <laughs> probably we have done, everybody of us have done a lot of in, dis, injustice to many patients. Yeah, a <laughs> lot of stress, yeah. unnecessary stress. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Ajit, this looks fine. fine. Now I am removing everything and we take the view. Go to AP Caudal. Yeah. Uh, just I would, uh, your, your concept that uh, taking a same stent balloon semi compliant pull it back and go high pressure. I think that's why the, some people are using semi-compliant balloon. I tell you, yeah. Jayesh, Zion's balloon is almost 90% non-compliant balloon. Amongst all the balloons, Zion's balloon is 90% non-compliant. Synergy is about 50-50, compliance, semi-compliance. And, and if you are using Onyx, it is most of the time 90% compliant balloon. This is what we have understood about the property of all these three. So the post dilatation, sometimes where the mismatch, like ostium is 3.5 and left main is 4.5, it is better to use a semi-compliant short balloon or to go no, with no, a, yeah. no. If you are putting, you know, you are expanding and if you have to, it's not. Is there any haziness in the circumflex? That's what is not a haziness. This is some calcium there. And I guarantee you, Ajay, 
it's nothing go is going to go wrong. It, this we have come across several times. Whatever you do, if you go on chasing it, you'll end up putting a stand there. Mm -hmm. It will worsen every time you inflict. So uh, I think I will conclude with, with this. Uh, again, there may be some debate about tackling the ramus or not, but no, better is enemy of good. I have got a good result. I will not chase it. And because now almost 90, 95% of the heart is getting good supply, medical management is very good to take care of this ramus. True, it's very so, diffuse the disease. Excellent job, thank you. So thank, you. thank you, and now we, you are going to see another great case from Dr. Shigeru Saito. Huh? Please, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank wonderful. You. Great discussion too, thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a question.